Hello, this is Hal Richardson with A Layman Looks at the Word, and we're continuing our study, Is Your Church Gospel Good News? This is program three in this series. As a brief review, we talked about how several different religions think today in the various things in the beginning lessons. We talked about the sin question and how Jesus has handled it, that Jesus' spirit actually comes at salvation and lives inside of you and rebirths your spirit, as we saw in John chapter 3. So this week we're going to get into the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit and what does it mean and what does he mean to you? What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. God made man in his image in Genesis 1.21. As God is comprised of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, so is man comprised of three. And the three that you are is body, soul, and spirit. And we read about that in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. As Jesus promised us, he would not leave us alone, but he would send the Holy Spirit to comfort and to lead and to guide us in all truth. In John 14. In Luke 11.9, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. This is Jesus speaking. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask for a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? To become God's child, you must be born again and receive the Spirit of Jesus in your spirit, as we have seen in our study. When you are a child of God, you ask God to receive the Holy Spirit within you. You already have Jesus in you, and then you receive the Holy Spirit in you as well. And now you have the very essence of Jesus and God living within you. This is confusing to most church folk, for they are taught there is only one Holy Spirit and you receive it or Him when you come to God through Jesus. Now there is no doubt that Jesus' Spirit is holy, but it is not the Holy Spirit of the Godhead. This is a misunderstanding. So let's look into Jesus' life in the scripture. Jesus was born without sin, perfect in spirit, born of a virgin, with God as his father. There was no need for him to be born again. And that's in Luke chapters 1 and 2. Jesus was 30 years old when he went to be baptized by John, which was his cousin. John saw the Holy Spirit descend in the form of a dove and light upon Jesus in Luke chapter 3. Jesus then had the Holy Spirit without measure and started his miraculous ministry. That's in Luke 4 and in John 3, 34.
the apostles were not saved until Jesus' resurrection when he appeared to them and showed them his scars on his hands and his feet. And he said, John 20, 22, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now I know the King James Version says the Holy Ghost, but the Greek means receive my spirit, which is holy. But as we've said, it's not the third person of the Godhead. It's Jesus' spirit. Jesus told them the Holy Ghost was coming later on. In Acts 1.4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which, saith he, you have heard of me? For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. In Acts 2.1, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. On that very day of Pentecost, Peter, Peter preached to the people, and 3,000 were saved. In Acts chapter 2, we read this. On the original Pentecost, which was on Mount Sinai, 3,000 people were killed for breaking the law in Exodus 32. In Acts 8, we read about Philip preaching and baptizing people in the name of Jesus, them being saved. But then Peter and John came and laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. It was another step. So we see in all these examples that I've given you of Jesus and uh, the apostles, and later the uh, Philip baptizing people in the name of Jesus, and then Peter and John coming and laying hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. All of these we see that salvation in Jesus is a separate event from being filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Those are synonymous. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you now have two members of the Godhead dwelling in you. The manifestation of the Spirit will be operating in you with the wonderful gifts that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. And the Holy Spirit himself will pray through you in Romans 8, 26. He will lead and guide you in all truth in John 16, 13. I know we're not teaching on the wonderful gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's in 1 Corinthians 12, but they should bear mention here. There's three sets, and the first one is the beginning prophetical vocal gifts, which is tongues, the interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. And then there's the gifts of knowledge from God. One is the word of wisdom, one is the word of knowledge, and one is the discerning of spirits. And then there's power gifts, and those are healings, miracles, and faith. All of these manifestations are given by the Holy Ghost for the edification of the church, and they work with those that are filled with the Holy Ghost and work through them, not at your will, but at God's will. So, so far, 
we have covered the very basics of our Christian faith. Salvation comes when Jesus' spirit comes to live inside your spirit and you become a child of God. This is all received when you ask in faith and believe that Jesus is the salvation of God. By grace you are saved and not works. The grace of God is given to you in a person and that person's name is Jesus. So that should answer some of the first questions that we had about it. Grace is the means of salvation for us. It is a gift from God, and it is nothing that you can possibly earn. It only comes from faith in Jesus and his spirit living in you. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except by me. And that's a fact. Sin is removed from you at this point. All of it, forever, past, present, and future. Jesus places upon you the very righteousness of himself, and you become the righteousness of God in him, as we have seen in Scripture. As a child of God, you can ask God himself and receive the filling of the Holy Ghost. You ask by faith and you ask in Jesus' name. The wonderful spiritual gifts and the manifestations are included in this. And now you will have two persons of the Godhead living inside you to lead and to guide you in all truth. I've showed you in scriptures that these are the basic truths and some of the misunderstandings keep people from, from focusing or realizing or trusting God in these things. Well, that's going to about finish this week's lesson. Uh, you're welcome to look at my blog, which is a layman looks at the word dot blogspot.com and I usually have whatever I'm teaching on written there if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your personal Savior if you've never been saved then you need to ask him into your life today he does draw those to himself whom he calls don't turn down his calling he is the only way to get to the Father Join me next week and we'll continue in our study. Is your church gospel good news? I'll see you then. Bye for now.